Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great Monday. It's not a good Monday, right? So miners are down, Bitcoin's down. Uh, a couple of miners were actually up today, but for the most part, everybody was getting crushed today. Markets got crushed a little bit today. And that's because Papa Powell stated that he's going to basically push down the road as far as when they're going to start it, cutting interest rates. So that had a, definitely a negative impact on things. Then we had a bunch of updates from the miners today. We got Argo, Bit Digital, Core Scientific, Marathon, and Riot reporting today. So we got a, a bunch of numbers that we're going to have to go through. A lot of explanations. Chapter's going to be down below for you guys, as always, on that. And also, I wanted to congratulate Bryce McNally and Anthony Power on starting Power Mining Analysis. So congrats to those guys um, getting that venture going up and running. Um, we'll have to see, obviously, exciting news from, <clears throat> from them coming up forward here. So I'm interested to see how that's going to work for them. Uh, but then less congratulations, guys. And let's get into the things that we really need to get into. So first, as always, we need to do this. Not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research. And I'm investing in fine coins and companies for full disclosure. And if you guys could hit the like button, subscribe, help me out. Uh, that would be tremendous of you guys, right? I don't ask much of you guys. Just a thumbs up on the video it would help out. Okay, so here's what we got. So let's take a look at Bitcoin here really quick. What's going on with it? And then we'll get into, obviously, the miners as well. So Bitcoin is down now for the last two days. It's below the 50-day moving average here, which is this blue and red line over here. Uh, when it's below it, it's in red. When it's above it, it's in the blue. Uh, but we are below it right now. We do have some support, looks like, right here, right around this range, which is good. Uh, we'll have to see how things progress going forward. Uh, we may come back down and bounce off of this 100-day uh, moving average, but we'll see. Okay. But like I said, I mean, you can see the markets here. They were all in the red here. Bitcoin was actually up in the morning hours and then came back down. Uh, and we still kind of closed out in the green. It looks like we were up slightly on Bitcoin. We were just up 0.21% on Bitcoin. Uh, we closed at 42,657 and then the miners you can see here that they were down pretty much across the board except for two so cores was up 5.37 percent i think that was basically because they announced that they got miners plugged in increased their hash rate and they are actually uh, mined pretty well here in the month of january so we'll go through those numbers as well we have the details for them but as you can see here everybody else got basically single digit uh, minuses percentage wise uh, the only one that was really down was uh, wolf wolf was down 12.36 percent on the day Okay, so that's it for that. Let's take a look at the updates that we do have here. So first one's going to be Argo. Argo Blockchain PLC announces January operational update. There isn't much to it here. It's going to be a quick one. We'll go through it here. The, I mean, they kind of go over what the decrease was, why the decrease happened, so forth, so on, that they were also able to get some power curtailment credits out of this as well, but they didn't provide how much. But here's what we have for them. Um, also, it looks like they are basically no longer hodling any Bitcoin. I think at one point they had like 9 BTC last month, potentially. Now it looks like that's all gone here. As of the 31st of January, the company held digital assets worth the equivalent of 18 Bitcoin, right? So they're not saying that they have Bitcoin, they just say equivalent of 18 Bitcoin. Uh, and then what we do have here is that they mined actually 124 Bitcoin in the month of January, okay? That's pretty much it. Uh, they go talking about the extreme weather and why it's down, and so forth, so on. Uh, let's see here. So Argo. Argo has 58 million shares outstanding, roughly. Market cap 106 million right now. Current hash rate 2.8x a hash. Future hash rate 2.8 as well. They are fully installed right now. Not much growth uh, in them as, as it is right now. Performance over the last 12 weeks has been not great. They're up 72% from 12 weeks ago. They're down 68 from 8 weeks ago. Down 54 from 4 weeks ago. And then last week they were down 15.7% on that. Okay. BTC production here, as you can see here, has been coming down here. Uh, obviously, in the last couple of months, we've seen the increase in Bitcoin transaction fees. Those have helped out, bring the numbers up a little bit. But overall, it's been a slide down uh, ever since basically January and some part of last year as well. Uh, you can see the month over month BTC production here, BTC HODL. You can see that that has also been coming down here. Not a good sign, right? That's basically leading me to believe that they are burning through cash. So we'll have to see what their balance sheet looks like at the end of Q4. Uh, but we'll take a look at it when it does come out. Then we got BTC per X hash efficiency. That's down to 44.29. Again, it was, uh, you know, with the network hash rate going up, uh, can't expect that. And then with them curtailing as well, can't expect that as well. BTC sold. They pretty much sold everything that they mined here, it looks like, in the month. And you can see their hash rate here. They've been stuck at 2.5 X hash for the first part of the year. Then they slowly got back up to 2.8, right? 300 pound hash increase, not much, but it did help them out a little bit here towards the second half of the year. Monthly Bitcoin revenue, they peaked in December, like a lot of miners did, with 6.59 million, and they're back down with 5.32 million here in January, it looks like. Hash rate, difference month over month, you can see that. BTC sold value, how much they sold, and then obviously the last four quarters revenue, 
We are waiting on Q4 results, which we'll probably get in a couple of weeks here from a lot of these miners coming up. We got uh, Clean Spark reporting the 8th, so this week on that one. Uh, let's see here. We'll update all of these, obviously, when that numbers come out. That is what we have for them as far as mining in uh, January. Based on the information that they provided us, and we know that there was about 10% in Bitcoin transaction fees being added to it. That equated to about 532,000 in Bitcoin transaction fees. Roughly, it's an estimate, right? It's not going to be exact, but it's just, I think, close enough. And based on this, what they actually reported as being mined, it looks like they were mining for approximately 22 days, uh, a little bit more than that, 22 and three quarters of a day in January. So definitely a lot of curtailment happening there. Going on, that gave us the 5.321 million in revenue, which obviously corresponds with what they stated. Their current fleet is at 32 joules per terahash, based on my estimates here. Okay, that is that part of it. Now, as far as analysts are concerned, analysts actually uh, bought a little bit more. So we have 32 institutions buying more, or not 32 more, just a couple more bought into it for more. And now shares owned are 1,080,000. That now corresponds to 1.9 million, sh or sorry, 1.9% of the shares out. So that's a decrease there that we saw. And then we have a little bit of a decrease here in uh, analyst ratings. So we still have one buy rating, or actually we have an increase, sorry. One buy rating three high, or three high, three hold ratings, one underperform rating, zero sells, and the price target stayed the same pretty much. It's still $3 for the high, $2.04 now for the average, and $1.20 for the low on that one. Okay, as far as my numbers are concerned, looking at the numbers for January, as far as revenue is concerned, going forward in the next two months before they're having it at 100%, and then the 10 months after that 50%, I'm looking for them to be somewhere in $1.60 to $2.40, right, if you look forward that way, but it all depends on where Bitcoin goes in value. And then if we look at historical data, so now we're looking at Q4 numbers, which are estimated. And I see the Q1, the quarter that we're in right now for this. So the current quarter is the current quarter that we're in. The last three quarters includes Q4, which is estimated. And then we have Q3 and Q2, which are actual numbers on that. Based on that, they don't have much growth. I'm in a PE of five or PS of five, if you want to call it that. They're at $2.45 to $3.67. I think they're undervalued based on this, but there's reasons why. Right now, a lot of growth going into the having event with them. They're pretty much cash strapped or they might be in cash trouble as it is. If we look at it here, they had at the end of Q3, 16.16 million in total current assets. And then they had 27.36 million in total current liabilities. Not sure how they were able to pay down some of this stuff, if at all. I know they took out some, or sold some shares there in the last couple of weeks trying to stay afloat, I'm guessing. Um, with the having coming up, it's going to be definitely very, very difficult for them. Because if Bitcoin stays where it's at, network hash rate increases, they're going to be at, what, generating about maybe $2 million in revenue. Uh, that's not going to be sustainable for a very long time for them. So they might be going under, based on what I'm seeing here at least, unless they get a lifeline from somebody and or dilute like crazy here. Okay, that's kind of the way I see things on them. And let's get into the next one here. So the next one is going to be on BitDigital. BitDigital is also going to be pretty sweet here. So BitDigital Inc. announces monthly production update for January 2024. Here's what we do have. They produce 145.7 Bitcoins. <clears throat> excuse me. It's a decrease of 14%. And the company's active hash rate was approximately 2.5 X hash, so pretty much where it was last month. Treasury holdings of BTC did increase here to 739.2, and they still have 18,072 of Ethereum right now. Going down here, here it is, BitDigital AI update. So they have an estimated 1 million of unaudited revenue here for the month of January so far. Uh, so, yeah, for January. We'll have to see. I may have to figure out a way to add this into it, into their revenue numbers here, especially if it starts getting a lot higher because it's going to have an impact on their uh, earnings per share price. So we may have to figure out a way to do that. And we may have to do that for other miners too when they actually start reporting revenue on that side of things if it starts being... A decent amount. Okay, but let's take a look at Bit Digital here really quick. So here's Bit Digital right now: 90.7 million shares outstanding. Stock price two dollars and forty cents as of today. Market cap 217. Performance over the last 12 weeks has been, well, not good. I mean, you guys can take a look at it here. I'm not going to go over it. Current hash rate 2.5. Future hash rate about 2.8. So they still have a little bit of uh, hash rate left to install, uh, and they are buying miners, I believe, or they bought miners to uh, increase that as well. So they have a little bit of growth left in them. They hodl 739 Bitcoin. That's valued at 31.7 million. You can see their BTC production here month over month. It has been kind of a roller coaster ride up and down, up and down. And it peaked, obviously, in December with 169.5. Going down here, we can see the monthly BTC mine difference, BTC hodl. 
that's been also kind of like a roller coaster ride as they've been buying um, the service for the AI sort of part of the business and also buying A6. So it's been kind of up and down, but it is starting to go back up here into the having event, which is nice to see. Bitcoins per exahash efficiency down to 57.8 right now. BTC sold numbers. You can see their hash rate growth has been pretty consistent here throughout this year. They were coming down a little bit through May, but then they started going back up in the right direction. So that's good. Monthly Bitcoin revenue peaked at December 7.21 million, and now we're at 6.25 million. The AI should be substantial business for them, so that should improve their numbers there. Monthly hash rate difference, you can see that. BTC sold value as well. Let's go down here to the assets. They had 66.4 million in assets as of Q3. We'll see how that is impacted by all the buying that they did. And then the total current liabilities was 2.24 million, so definitely a very good, healthy balance sheet there. Not a lot of problems there. As far as production is concerned, based on the numbers that we do have here for them, they mined for about 29.72 days, it looks like. So pretty efficient there. Uh, pretty good uptime as well. And they are, I added 625,000 in BTC revenue or BTC transaction fees because my numbers here are based on 6.25 BTC per block, basically. And that's kind of the way that's figured in. So I have to add in transaction fees into it at the end of the month as well. Okay, so that's kind of where we're at with that. Going over here, oh, their efficiency right now is about 28.39 joules per terahash estimated based on my part. Institutions, so institutions did increase to 140. That's now 36.5 million shares. So that's a slight increase that we've seen before. And the percentage is now 40.26. So that's also an increase. We still have the same one strong buy rating, two buy ratings, zero holds, zero underperforms, zero sells. Price targets are the same as they were the month prior, 770 for the high, 573 for the average, and 450 for the low now going forward into the next 12 months looking at january numbers here multiplying with times two months before the having event and then the 10 months after the having event, 50 percent i am at basically two dollars and 41 cents to three dollars and 68 cents or 62 cents they are at this point they'd be probably pretty closely valued to that but obviously it's going to be offset a lot by how much they can generate from the ai side of business which we know is going to be like 35 50 billion 35 50 million a year okay uh, if we look at historical numbers here, going back the last four quarters, so actually the last three quarters, the current quarter that we're in estimated, we have them at $2.98 to $4.47 and I'm in P10 because the growth isn't that much. Um, I think the analysts here are valuing the AI side of things as well into this where I'm not really valuing that right now. So I think if we add that, we could possibly get that high as well. Okay. So for, based on that, I would say that they are undervalued currently. All right that would be bit digital okay next one course scientific here so course scientific announces january 2024 production and operations update and it's actually pretty good here for them uh if we go down here self-mining bitcoin 1027 hosting bitcoin produced 354 i don't track the hosted side of things in the past that side of the business was a losing proposition so they've actually improved on them we'll have to wait to see q4 numbers to see how that has improved if it has improved significantly where it's a huge margin on that or a much better margin on that, we may include that in uh, going forward or separately from it, but just kind of keep track of it. But we'll see. And then self-mining energized hash rate right now is 18.6. So that is a nice increase from the 16.9 that they had in December. Uh, so it's always good to see when they are growing. Total ener energized hash rate is 24.8. That includes obviously the hosting side of the business as well. And then Bitcoin sold, they sold 1,114. So obviously everything that they self-mined in a portion of the hosted Bitcoin. I'm wondering what they're doing with the rest of it because I've seen this like in the last two, three months where they don't sell everything that they get for hosting and self-mining. So, But they don't report any HODL. So I wonder if they're using it to pay down debt to creditors but they're paying in Bitcoin. I have no idea. Um, that's just kind of a question that I have there. Okay. Self-mining, they're at 167,000 right now, 18.6 exahash. And then they installed here new miners. So the company completed the deployment of 28,400 new Bitmain S19 JXP miners procured from Bitmain under contract announced on September 21st, 2023. The new miners are rated to operate between 141 and 151 terash and an average of approximately 22 joules per terash. So that's good there. Core Scientific expects to deploy an additional 12,600 Bitmain S21 miners by the end of July 2024, representing 2.5 exahash in energized hash rate and operating at 17.5 joules per terahash. Uh, for, I don't know if this is going to be for self-mining or if this is going to be part of the deal where Bitmain is hosting with them. Okay, didn't uh, they didn't specify here. 
So we'll see what that one comes out of. But to get it for self mining, that'd be great on it. Um, okay, I think that's it. There's a couple questions here. Oh, yeah, take a look at the questions here because I think some of these questions are pretty common here within the community. Uh, what is the duration and exercise price of the new warrants, right? What is the company's capital structure as of the listing date? Uh, how many shares of new stocks have been issued? And that's kind of what I'm using here for them is 184.9 million, I believe, uh, as well. So that's kind of what I'm using there for their, how to figure out their market cap on that, okay? So overall, really good numbers here. Let's take a look at the numbers that I do have here for them for core. We'll get on to the next one here. So yeah, I'm using those numbers that they provided here. That's kind of numbers that... Uh, for shares outstanding right now, or shares out. Uh, so 184.9 sh million shares out. out. Uh, the stock price $3.14. Their market cap is at 580 million right now. Uh, and then obviously we don't have a lot of data here because they switched ticker symbols for us. Going from Core, Z, uh, core ZQ to Core Z. Um, so that's obviously had an impact on my numbers here based on that because they did a, well, they got out of Chapter 11 bankruptcy. They did a reverse merge or reverse split on the stock prices and then it was added in there. So it's goofy. So that's kind of what we're dealing with right now, but they've definitely been up uh, quite substantially from last year. Okay, current hash rate 18.6, future hash rate 21.4 roughly. Hash rate left 2.8 uh, around there. So they still have a lot of growth here. It looks like nicely and they're looking to possibly grow even further. BTC production here, you can see that January of last year, they had 1,527 Bitcoin. And then it's been coming down uh, throughout the year and then started to kind of pick back up here in November and definitely in December where we had the transaction fees being added to it as well. But they're still uh, quite below, not quite below, I'd say they're still below their average line here. Okay, month over month difference. BTC title, they don't hold anything, at least they don't report it. BTC per access efficiency down to 55, which isn't bad. And then BTC sold how much they've been selling. Hash rate here has been increasing in the last couple of months, which is good to see. And then revenue here at 50 million in December, 44 million in January. Really good numbers there from them. Obviously, we've seen the dec decrease in network transaction fees. That's having an impact on all the miners. And we've also seen miners curtail because of the weather. So January is not looking good for a lot of the miners here. Okay. Now we'll have to obviously see what comes out of the Q4 numbers for them, how they have done all of their restructuring with the debt and everything else. How are their current assets looking like? And we'll get a much better picture at it at the company at that time, I think. Okay, going down here. Uh, let's see here, production-wise. Okay, January had them operating for about 30.67 days out of the month here. And that gave them, uh, we installed these XPs here. And I may have to increase them to like 145 on average or something like that. Because they reported they have 167,000 uh, miners. I have it at 175. So I need to do some numbers on this where it's going to work out because I think some of these older miners got probably unplugged and got swapped out with some of these newer miners here as well. Uh, so they had these 98.5 terash miners. So I would get rid of those as well. So that kind of makes sense. So we move those out, move them up and basically got a new line for them as far as what might be left on them. And we may have to update this again in February, depending on if they install more miners or not. Okay. But that's kind of what we're looking at. So really good uptime here so far. Um, for the month. So this is looking really good. Like seeing that. And then when we look at the uh, institution side of things, institutions actually went down to 20 here. Uh, share pro or uh, shares, number of shares that are owned by institutions didn't decrease too much. It's still at 20 million and 70,000 roughly before they had 20 million and 380,000. It's percentage wise owned is still 5.2. So that's not bad. We still don't have, the only thing that's changed really here is we don't have any analyst ratings as far as pricing and buy-in ratings, buy and hold ratings on the new ticker symbol cores. So we're waiting on that to come in. But we, prior to that, we had $2 and the price target was a dollar. Now, given that they went and did a reverse split on this year's, I would expect that to be whatever that reverse split was. So if it's $10 on the higher end side here to maybe $5 on the low end, the lower end side, based on those numbers. Now, given that they are growing here, I could say that they would probably catch uh, 20 P, P or PS, whichever one you want to use. And then looking forward the next 12 months, two months before having it at 100%, 10 months after at 50%, we're looking at somewhere between 1668 and 2502. And now if we look at the prior quarters, so we're, uh, we're using the current quarter that we're in right now, plus the previous quarter, which is the estimated number, and then Q2 or Q3 and Q2 are actual numbers. We're looking at $22.77 to $34.15. I do think they are way undervalued right now, but the big obviously concern is with any company that gets out of chapter 11 bankruptcy 
is possible dilution, uh, the warrants, everything else. There's a lot of questionable things in there. So what we really want to see is their numbers from Q4, Q1 coming up. And I think they'll give a better picture to uh, investors as far as how the company is operating at this point. Okay, but that's kind of where we're standing at right now. So I think that's it for that one. Really good month for Core. Uh, they're finally doing a lot better than they were in, when they were in Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So this is a good sign. We'll have to see the numbers when they report the Q4 numbers, see how things stack up. And I think we may not get all the numbers that we really want to see until they report for the Q1 2024 numbers for them. This is when they actually got out of Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So those might be really important there. Take a look at that. Okay, that's it for Core. Let's go on to the next one here, which is going to be on Marathon. So Marathon Digital Holdings announces Bitcoin production and mining operation updates for January. And they had a rough month. Um, I will just leave it at that. Um, they had some equipment failure, it looks like. So I was speculating that it might be like electricity. They don't have enough electricity that they could possibly get to, but it looks like it's going to be on equipment failures. But even then, that's still pretty bad equipment failures that they've had here. So that's not a good sign, at least for the short term. Okay, so we'll get through all of this. And... Um, provide you as much updates as we can here. So in January, we increased our energized hash rate 7% to 26.4 exahash as our team worked to address several temporary disruptions that negatively impacted our production. These disruptions included weather-related curtailment and equipment failures that led to site outages and reduced our uh, average operational hash rate by 14% to 19.3 exahash in January. Um, I mean, it seems like at certain times they were running less than that even, um, like even below 10 exahash on some days, it seems like. So it wasn't good. It definitely had a huge impact on their production and the revenue that was potentially lost from all this. Okay, our team is addressing the short-term disruptions and working to bring our sites back to full strength. We expect hash rate to improve over the next few weeks. Fingers crossed this doesn't turn into like one of those debacles that we saw with Riot, right? Where Riot had uh, issues with one of their sites as well. They had to wait on parts coming in from overseas and it took them forever. So hopefully it's going to be a few weeks. Uh, that'll be good, okay? because they do have a lot of hash rate, and it's a shame that they can't run that hash rate. In collaboration with our regional partner, we completed the construction and energization of all 250 megawatts of our joint venture in Abu Dhabi, which is among the most technologically advanced immersion deployments globally and operates at nearly 100% uptime. At the same time, we continue executing our joint venture in Paraguay. This deployment now has 2,100 miners, or 3.3 exahash operational. We continue to expect the full 1.1 exahash to be online in Q2. If anybody knows what their percentage of ownership is in the joint venture in Paraguay, I'd love to hear it. I can't find it for some reason. I'll have to dig through some numbers here. I know that for Abu Dhabi, I think they have like 20% stake in that only. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that as well. Um, I cover a lot of miners, so I have a lot of data and just sometimes it gets flipped in my head. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong on that one also. And then uh, there's reasons for this. We'll discuss it in the numbers that we do have here for them later on. Uh, going down here. Okay, production here. So Bitcoin produced 1,084. This also includes the joint venture stuff. So it's kind of tough tracking them. I wish they would separate the stuff out for the joint ventures and for their own self-mining. It would make it a lot easier because, well, the main reason is if the company doesn't own a um, majority share or what do they call it? There's a term for it. I forget the term, but it's basically you have to own 50 plus percent of a joint venture in order to be able to report it on as revenue and take in the expenses of it as well on the on, on the quarterly results. If you own less than 50%, you can't do that. You have to put it into another uh, column. I think it goes under the assets uh, line item somewhere in there for it. So that's why I don't include joint venture materials. It's not something that I just started doing out of the heck of, for whatever reason, it's basically a FASB uh, rule, right? That's done by the, there's another body that uh, does this. I can't remember the, the acronym right now, but they do it for all the companies here. So it's not something that's only tomorrow. I do this with other companies as well. For Cypher, TerraWolf, I think DigiHost is in that boat as well. Uh, anybody that has a joint venture, doesn't own more than 50%, controlling interest. That's the term I was looking for, controlling interest. If a company doesn't have a controlling interest in the joint venture, they can't report it on as revenue. Okay. So that's kind of what we're working with here. So I wish they would, like I said, uh, split this out, make it a lot easier. So what we have to go by is basically what they have on their Mara pool, right? Mara pool is what they use as their own pool for mining Bitcoin. And in there, we can track to see how many Bitcoins they mined throughout the month. They reported 140. I originally was looking at the numbers. I was doing it wrong. Uh, I had 133, I think I had. 
at that time. And there's a reason for this. So I learned this today. So I want to say thank you to Chris. I emailed Chris today. Chris is from Marathon. He's their investor relations department. And he got back to me within a couple hours and then basically pointed to my mistake here. My mistake was I was looking at the numbers here. And when you look at Marathon Pool here, the numbers here, you can see that the dates are here, right? So those aren't the actual time dates that you want to go by. The time that you actually want to go by is the UTC time date, which is actually within the block. So if you go into the block here, and if anybody wants to track this, this is how you would track it now. Now I know too. Live and learn all the time. So I appreciate the information here. And if you look at it, here it is. So if you scroll over this, now you get the actual time of when this was mined on the UTC time, time date. Uh, let me see if I can zoom this in for you guys. So here you can see it's showing 1117, uh, but it's actually mined uh, UTC at 1717, okay? So there's a difference right there on that one. And that's how I was off on my blocks. I just wanted to point that out. We do have this fixed going forward and we won't make that mistake again. Okay, so back to this. Let's see if there's anything else in here. There it is. As of January 31, the company holds a total of 15,741 unrestricted BTC with a substantial cash position at the end of the year. Marathon opted not to sell any Bitcoin in January, instead purchased an additional 183.5 Bitcoin at an average price of 39,738. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. Company that's mining Bitcoin, buying mining, <laughs> buying Bitcoin at the market price, right? You can mine it for a heck of a lot less why would you, that's just my thoughts on it. Why would you actually buy Bitcoin if you can mine it at a much lower cost? Uh, I know you want to have as much Bitcoin as you go into the having. Maybe that's the reason why. Okay, I could see that they have a healthy balance sheet. So there's really no harm in doing that. But if you're going to be buying, you really will probably want to buy around 20,000, not now at 39,000. But, it, you know, hindsight is 2020 always. So I don't know how I feel about this. Let me know how you guys feel about it with the company buying Bitcoin at market when they're actually mining it at a much lower cost. Uh, but you know how I feel on it. Um, neither nay or hey. So going down here, I think there's anything else. Nope, that is it. So, oh, the facilities uptimes. This is interesting here. So based on what they reported that they had, obviously equipment failures, a couple of facilities, it looks like. You can see here that the Ellendale facility is down to 51% operational in the month of January. That's a huge decrease from the 95 that they had in December. So something major must have happened there. Uh, McCamey, Texas, uh, also down about 10%, so it's not too bad, down 82%, so that could be weather-related. Garden City down also, actually up 3% from December, so that's good there. Granbury down 78% now from 99, so that's a decrease of 11%, no, 21%, so that's pretty sizable there. Jamestown is actually up 4% to 90%, so that's good, and then all others are basically their joint ventures, I'm guessing, that they might have out there. Uh, that's kind of what we're going with here. And yeah, that's it. So that's what's going on with all the decreases in Bitcoin mine and everything else. All right, let's take a look at Marathon here. Marathon is right there. So Marathon has 222 million shares outstanding. Um, last I checked, as we'll get an updated number on this, obviously, when they report their Q4 numbers, but they're currently at 3.7 billion market cap. Their performance, like a lot of miners, has been kind of a weak here over the last 12 weeks up. There's, I mean, it's still up 82% from 12 weeks ago. From eight weeks ago, they're down 0.5%. From four weeks ago, they're down 4.1%. And last week, they were actually up 1.96%. So it hasn't been great, but it hasn't been too bad either. Current hash rate, 24.6, something like that. Future hash rate, around 30. Uh, they do have plans, obviously, to grow beyond that as well. Hash rate left, 5.6, roughly, operational. So they still have plenty of growth left in them. Bitcoin HODL, 15,741. They do have also 700 Bitcoin that are, um, I think they, did they put that out over here, over here? Did I miss it? I think they wrote it over here someplace uh, that, that is restricted or not restricted. It's, um, oh, where did I see it? I saw it someplace. There's just too much, too much information here. So there it is. Pledged BTC holding. So I don't know what that is for. Pledged. Is it pledged for miners? Is it pledged for something else? Buildings, equipment? I don't know what that's for. But that they have that. So in reality, they could be at above that. So 16... 1,441 is maybe what they have total, but they have BTC of 700 pledge for something else, okay? So there's that. So that's valued about 676 million right now at the current market price of Bitcoin. Their huddle position to market cap is about 18% right now. You can see their BTC self-mined here. And this is for self-mining only, I'm tracking. They mined eight, right around 1,800, I think it was 1,801, maybe even more, right around there. 
in December. I'll just leave it at that. So I even put a little note in here. As of December 20, it should be 2023, BTC mined is calculated from Mara Pool using UTC time. Right, this is kind of when they kind of switched over into including um, joint venture information in there as well for the BTC that they mine. So there's there's the caveat, there's the dis, um, disclosure. And in January, it looks like they mined 986.65 based on the Mara pool. And I actually went back and it is the 140 blocks. Uh, and this is what we got for them. Okay, uh, month of a month difference. You can see last month they were up 649. This month they were down 813. Yes, we've seen obviously a decrease in Bitcoin transaction fees. They're down about 60% from last month. Um, that equates to about 10% additional in fees this month for, or January for the miners, but it's still a sizable decrease there. So that's definitely painful uh, for them. I'm sure they're going to be working on that to get that resolved as quickly as possible because it is costing them a lot of money. BTC HODL is, has been increasing here. You can see that that's a nice view of it from 11,418 last January to now 15,741. That is a wonderful increase there. And they definitely have, um, plenty of cash to do mergers and acquisitions if they want to after the having event right with, to buy more distressed assets uh, you know sites and things like that if they wanted to so they do have that optionality to pull that trigger if they wanted to btc per exit hash went way down here to 40 this time around for january btc sold and this is also for only self mining i don't include the hosting in there btc sold they haven't sold anything in there uh, hash rate continued to increase here, which is nice to see. Revenue, obviously, uh, revenue was way up in December, 76.58. And this was also for self-hosting only, for self-mining. Uh, didn't include the revenue from the joint ventures in this. And then January, way down to 42.35 million here. So that's a sizable decrease in the revenue that you have. And I probably should increase the size for you guys uh, so you guys can see it better. There we go. Uh, yeah, so what is that? That's basically 30... 4 million decrease in revenue, right? Part of that is due because of the transaction fees, the weather as well. But a large part of it is also from uh, being shut down because of equipment failures, equipment problems. So that's not good. Um, something I want to touch on that is, you know, if you're running those types of operations where you're making a lot of money from those operations, you would think that they would maybe have some spare parts. Uh, obviously, you're not going to have probably a transformer laying around. But anything else that could be attributable to that, whether it's switches, um, you know, other PSUs, whatever it might be, you would think you would have things laying around that you could just quickly switch out. That's just my th my my take on it. Okay. Now going down here, we know their balance sheet is healthy. There's nothing to really talk about there. When we look at their production numbers here, this is where things get uh, you get to see how things actually look like here. So for January. Based on what they reported, and then I added uh, 4.2 4 million in additional um, transaction fees into it. That got us to about 20.59 days in operation on average for the fleet that they have. And then down here, I'm tracking, trying to track at least the joint venture stuff here. So it looks like based on what was reported, uh, they had about, it's, this is going to be correct. 18.9 is not correct because they had a hash rate there month prior. I was in tracking. Now we obviously increase that to about 2.7 exahash there. That is going to be uh, obviously an offset here. So when you install a lot of miners, it's going to take a while. So on average, they're probably closer to operating, I would say, closer to the 100% that they're saying. But because they just added so much to it this month, that's going to have an impact. So don't go by these numbers here. That's going to be an offset. But basically what we got from that is about 3.8 million in additional revenue from it. So that total to about 46 million here total for them uh, for the month of January with the joint venture. But like I said, that's not going to be on the revenue side of things. It's going to be under the asset side of things reported unless they own more than 50%, like I said. Okay, so that's kind of where we're standing at here. And then based on looking at what they should have mined. So if they ran for the full 31 days, they should have mined approximately 63 million worth of uh, Bitcoin here. That's a decrease from what they actually mined now of 21 million. So that's kind of what the impact is of that, uh, well, the impact of the equipment issues, right? So that's expensive, right? That's why you really should have backup things if you can, um, because that is getting costly here. The more days you're down for whatever reason, it's going to be, you know, even more costly. So that's a costly um, thing there. All right. So that's that part of it. We covered all that. And then I'm also track, tracking the BTC plus joint venture Bitcoins uh, reported here as well. So we can track that going forward. 
And then as far as institutions are concerned, institutions did increase here to 351 from 337. Shares increased as well to 87.5 million from 85.5. Percentage increased to 39.4. And then now we have two strong buy ratings, two buy ratings, five hold ratings, one underperform rating. And price targets actually increased to $27 uh, from 24 for the high average went up to 1828. And then the low stayed still at 850. So looking at where we are right now, it going 12 months forward, two months before the having event at 50% or 100%, and then 10 months after 50%, looking at $13.32 to 1997. And then if we use the current quarter that we're in, plus the Q4 numbers, which are estimated, and then Q3 and Q2 numbers, we're looking at $21.86 to $32.80. They're at $16.64. Definitely think they're undervalued right now. Um, but they got to get the equipment failures fixed as soon as possible. Obviously, I don't have any issues with Marathon here going beyond the having events, like maybe some of the smaller miners might have issues, right? Going, they have a healthy balance sheet, huge hodl, plenty of hash rate, plenty of hash rate growth still. Definitely not a concern. Definitely, you know, one of the top miners here. Yep. So that's it for Marathon. Let's get into Ride here really quick. And we'll call it a day. It's going to be a long one, guys. So I do apologize for, for it, but I'm just trying to get the information out to you guys as fast as I can. All right. So Ride announced the January 2024 production operations updates here. This is a picture of their Corsicana facility being built out. They're getting close to the 400 megawatts being completed, which is nice. We'll cover that here in a second. Bitcoin produced 520. Bitcoin held 7,648. They only sold 212 of that right now. Deployed hash rate still the same, 12.4. Power credits, so they got 2.2 and 1.1 million here, so about 3.3 million in power credits. So that's better than what they got in December, which was just barely anything, half a million for that. Um, so there's obviously more demand on electricity and prices obviously went up on that. So they got more for it. Going down here, here's a picture of the Corsica kind of facility. You got the first building looks like being built out already pretty close. And I think they're going to state it down there what their plan is. Yep, here it is. So Riot is currently de developing phase one of the co company's second uh, large scale facility, the Corsica kind of facility, which will add an additional 400 megawatts of capacity upon completion of this initial phase. Once fully deployed, the Corsica kind of facility will have up to one gigawatt in total uh, capacity. So that's going to be huge. The 400 megawatt substation is expected to be energized by the end of March. Um, so basically two months away from now. And the first 100 megawatt building, A1, will commence operation immediately thereafter. Uh, and that'll be good. So I think that's going to get them possibly up to the 20.1 exa hash here. So that's going to be a nice increase there, right around there. So we're kind of looking right around uh, the having event, potentially, them getting to 20.1 exa hash. It would have been a lot nicer if they could have gotten there sooner, but you know, getting there now is better than never. And then Q3, they're looking at 24, and then Q4, 28. So then they still have, obviously, growth plan to get to 38 exa hash by the second half of 2025. So good growth there. Right anticipates achieving a total self-mining hash rate capacity of 29 exa hash by the end of the year. So that's definitely going to be nice. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. That is it. Let's take, take a look at the numbers that I have for them. All right. So 206 million shares as of right now. Uh, that's going to change, obviously, once we get the Q4 results for them, but that gives them a market cap of 2.1. At a certain point last year, there was times where Marathon and Rye were kind of going back and forth between who had the highest market cap, and obviously Marathon here won out in the last couple months uh, and stayed that way. Uh, but performance here over the last 12 weeks has been abysmal. It has been really bad. It hasn't been good for them. So and I think that's mainly tied to maybe their production here that they have... Uh, going on with their, it's just not operating like they probably should be. Okay, but here's what we got. So 12.4 exa hash right now, future hash rate 38. We got a long ways to go to that. So they have plenty of future growth here. They have 7,648 Bitcoin that's valued at 328 million right now. BTC production, you can see here, has been kind of up and down here, but their best so far has been last year in January of this time frame, And now they're down to 520. So where we're seeing um, some miners do a little bit better, they're kind of squeaking out just barely here and they're out below their average here. So like to see better numbers and i think once course kind of comes online i think i think we'll see much better numbers from them going forward okay btc huddle obviously a nice huddle increase here and then we got uh btc per access efficiency 41.94 right they curtail so they're not going to be the most efficient here but they do get some power credits for it so i don't count those in there for the revenue side of things um but that definitely helps bring the cost down of the bitcoin that they do mine btc sold hash rate revenue uh, hash rate and revenue, 12.4 is where we're at. They were at 9.7, so a slight increase here over the year, right? They had a pretty much, in 2023, the full, ever since, I think, December of 2022, I think. And then in 23, they had the problems with two facilities where they were down because of problems and they had to get parts for from England, I think. So 
that obviously affected things at that point. And then revenue here that peaked at 26.34 million in December, January is at 22.32, so not too much of a decline from there. So that was pretty good there. I think they actually mined for a little bit more here. But we'll take a look, take a look at the numbers here shortly. Uh, hash rate difference, BTC sold value. So you can see that they've been consistently selling here. Uh, assets and liabilities, not a problem there. Healthy balance sheet, nothing to worry with them, at least on that part of things. So we know they're going to survive and grow and probably thrive going forward. Looking at January, I had them at 21.56 days in operation. Based on those numbers, and I had to add 2.2 million into uh, addition of that as Bitcoin transaction fees being added into it. And based on this, I thought I put it in here, but it came out to, if they actually mined for the full month, uh, it came out to that they could possibly get to, well, let's do that math here right now. We basically got 22,313 divided by 21.56 and then times 31. They should have gotten about 32 million in revenue if they were able to mine basically for the full month. Um, and they only got 22, so that's a 10 million decrease. So they got 3.3 million in power credits. Did it really make sense to do that? I don't know. Uh, you know, if they're capped at a certain amount of power and then they get charged a higher fee on the power, well, maybe. Uh, but it just depends on what that rate is for that power, right? Would it have made more sense to power? But they also have hosting, and so it gets complicated with them. Okay, but that's possibly why they are down right now. All right, institutions and analysts, uh, we have 373. Now, so that's an increase from 357 shares increased as well to 85.5 million from 83.8 percentage now owned by 41.46 by institutions. We still have the same four strong buy ratings, seven buy ratings, one hold rating, zero underperforms, zero sells. Price tag is actually went up to $26. Average went up to $18.71 and the low stayed the same at $11. And then when we look at all the numbers here for the 12 months going forward, two months before the having at 100%, 10 months after the having at 50%, I'm in between $7.56 and $11.34. And then if we look at the current quarter that we're in, the last quarter that Q4 is estimated right now, and then the two quarters after that, which is Q3 and Q2, which are actual numbers, I'm at $10.38 to $15.57. So I'm surprised that the analysts have been that high at $26. Uh, and that's with me having a PS or PE of 20 on them right now. If they were operating fully, right? Um, you could definitely include, include another like 33% on top of this, I think. So that would get us closer to like the 20 some odd range potentially on them on price targets. But right now, just the way they are. So I think Corsicana is going to be a cha game changer for them potentially. And we'll have to see how they progress going forward. But I think they're going to do fine as long as they can build out and do everything that they say they're going to do on a timely manner. Okay, but that is it. That's everything there. So if you guys enjoyed this, um, if you enjoyed the spreadsheets, you can always get the spreadsheets. Uh, access is to, through my Patreon membership. You get all these spreadsheets, all these data, all these graphs, everything that I have on the miners. And that's $8 a month now. And then there's some spots open maybe at $5 and $4 if they're available. Other than that, you get that. Plus you get the Discord uh, private server with me and the rest of the gang there. And it's always a lot of fun to converse in there as well. All right, so I will leave it at this. Uh, let me see, where do I want to go? I want to go, I want to go, go here. This is where I want to go. So a lot of updates, obviously, December was a great month for a lot of the miners. Now, January was a little bit less. Uh, it wasn't too bad. We had a, like pretty much a, like a consistent 20% decrease in some of these miners. Unless the miners were actually growing in hash rate, then we saw a little bit less of a decrease in what they mined from December to January. Uh, going forward, I do think, uh, I mean, we're seeing some price reduction right now in the miners. I kind of expect the price reduction to continue maybe into the having event, potentially. I don't know exactly how much further we're going to go down. Uh, if we do go down, I look at it as a buying opportunity potentially. Uh, you guys have to obviously do your own research on that, invest how you guys see fit. But I'm going to be possibly looking to get into some of these miners, uh, the ones that I've been getting into, dollar cost averaging some more. And then obviously we know what usually happens after the having event. So patience here is the main key, I think. Um, you can also try trading these. Uh, there's a lot of people that I know that are trading these up and down and they're doing really well on it. I don't have the time for it. So this is the way I do it. Okay. But I think the best times are still ahead of us. You just got to be patient. Okay. So that is it. Thank you so much for coming in to watch this. If you guys enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe. Um, helps me out tremendously, especially hitting the like button. That definitely helps the YouTube algorithm get the video out to more people. And then that helps me out. Okay. So appreciate you all. Hope you guys have a wonderful evening and a great night. And I'll see you guys in the next one.